Nobody wants to work past the age of 65. Or maybe they do. I mean, it takes all sorts to make a world. But if you are working past 65 and bringing in those extra bucks, make sure they're not going to waste by avoiding some of these huge Medicare mistakes. First things first, if you are working past the age of 65 and maintaining credible coverage, make sure you go ahead and defer Medicare Part B. Maybe. Compare the cost of your current monthly premium to what your monthly premium would be with Medicare Part B. If your current monthly premium is lower, then it's a no-brainer. In that case, definitely go ahead and defer Medicare Part B. But if Medicare Part B seems like the more attractive option, then we need to do some additional cost comparing. We need to look at those additional costs with original Medicare and also talk about the costs associated if you're looking to supplement your original Medicare with a Medigap plan. So original Medicare is comprised of Medicare Part A, which is your hospital insurance, and Medicare Part B, which you can consider your medical insurance, basically anytime you see a doctor. Medicare Part A will help to cover things like inpatient care in a hospital, skilled nursing facility care, behavioral and mental health, hospice care, home health care, and nursing home care, although I really wish they would asterisk this because this is very confusing to many people. And Medicare Part B will help to cover things like ambulance services, clinical research, durable medical equipment, this is things like wheelchairs, walkers, etc. limited outpatient prescription drugs, that's very important. These aren't the prescription drugs that you probably take on a daily basis for your cholesterol or your high blood pressure. These are drugs that are administered intravenously, vaccinations, chemotherapy, certain oral anti-cancer drugs, etc. Also mental health and substance use disorders and oxygen equipment and accessories. It will also cover medically necessary services and preventative services. Basically, anytime you see a doctor is when Part B kicks in. Now, although Original Medicare really does provide excellent coverage, there are definitely out-of-pocket costs and financial gaps that you need to be aware of. This page on Medicare.gov will break down the costs associated with Part A and Part B as well. So as I mentioned, for the premium for Part A, it is $0 for most people. If you haven't met that 40 quarters yet, then you'd either pay $278 per month if you've worked between 30 and 39 quarters, or $505 per month if you've worked less than 30 quarters. Then there is the deductible and copays and coinsurance. So for Part A, the deductible in 2024 is $1,632. Now this is applied per benefit period, which it, you can really think of it like per hospital stay and 60 days thereafter. So if you were to be hospitalized more than once in a given year and you're in a new benefit period, then you would actually have to meet that deductible more than once. Then there's coinsurance and copays for your actual care. Inpatient stay in a hospital, days 1 through 60, no charge. But after that, those charges are rather significant. Same thing with skilled nursing facility care. And then there's home health care and hospice care as well. If we scroll down to Part B, it's a little bit easier to understand. There is a premium, but that is determined by your income. Your deductible is a once annual deductible, $240 in 2024. Once you've met that deductible, you'll be responsible for coinsurance or copays. And pretty much across the board, it's going to be 20% of the Medicare approved amount. This is why so many people look to supplement their original Medicare coverage with a Medigap plan, aka a Medicare supplement plan. There are 10 different plans to choose from with varying levels of coverage and varying price points. So here are the 10 Medigap plans available. Plan A, B, C, D, F, G, K, L, M, and N. And this chart just details what benefits are offered by which plan. Now remember, Medigap plans aren't going to offer additional benefits that aren't already offered by Original Medicare. For example, Original Medicare doesn't offer dental benefits, so you're not going to see that any of these plans offer dental benefits. Instead, what they're going to do is help to cover or possibly entirely cover copays, coinsurance, and deductibles. So basically, you pay a little bit extra, but almost all of your out-of-pocket expenses or possibly all of your out-of-pocket expenses will be taken care of. So you can see that all of the plans will cover your Part A coinsurance, which is extremely helpful. Um, all the plans will cover in some capacity Part B coinsurance or copays. Plans K and L are known as cost-sharing plans. So basically they're going to contribute to these 
out-of-pocket costs, but Plan K will cover 50% of your cost, and Plan L will cover 75%, and that's just pretty much, generally speaking, across the board. All the plans will cover the first three pints of blood in the case of need of transfusion, Part A hospice care, coinsurance or copays, that's very important, skilled nursing facility care, coinsurance, again, very, very important. The only plans that don't offer that is Plan A and Plan B. Your Part A deductible, that's that deductible that's applied per benefit period. So if you do need to be hospitalized more than once in a given year, then you might have to meet that deductible again, and that can certainly be very expensive. The Part B deductible, no plans that are offered to new enrollees are going to cover that Part B deductible, but that's a once annual deductible and it's not very expensive, so it's not your biggest concern. Part B excess charges, um, so basically if your doctor accepts original Medicare, then they accept the amount that Medicare is willing to pay out. However, they can choose to charge an excess charge, which is up to 15% more. Now, I wouldn't necessarily worry about these because they're not all that common and they're not even permissible in all states. The only plans that do cover Part B excess charges are plans F and G. Plan F is one of those plans that's not offered to new enrollees, but if you are looking for the most comprehensive coverage available to everyone, then that would be plan G. Foreign travel, um, almost all plans will cover that to, in some capacity, 80%. And then there's this out-of-pocket limit. You'll see it's asterisk here because it's not really applicable. Um, for example, plan F and plan G and even to an extent plan N are really going to cover all of your out-of-pocket expenses except for possibly that part B deductible. Um, plans K and plan L, because they are the cost sharing plans, they do have an out of pocket maximum, which is very helpful because if you do have major medical bills, original Medicare doesn't have any type of limit or threshold on what your spending could be. So the reason you need to understand all of this now has to do with medical underwriting and Medigap enrollment. So let's say your group health insurance plan actually is a little expensive and Medicare Part B looks significantly less expensive. Well, it might be very tempting to make the switch. But wait, this affects your Medigap enrollment. You have a six month window after you turn 65 and enroll in Medicare Part B to enroll in a Medicare supplement plan with no medical underwriting. That means you cannot be denied or charged more based on your health. Should you choose to enroll outside of the six month window, then you may be subject to medical underwriting, which means you could be charged more or denied completely. And this is much more common than you might think. Hey, a brief pause. If you like what you're seeing, make sure to like and subscribe. And of course, feel free to leave a comment with any questions or feedback. We would love to hear from you and YouTube loves to promote videos with lots of comments. And of course, if you do have more in-depth questions, you can reach us at the number on the screen. We are licensed nationwide and there's no charge for our services. So if you're ready to make the switch from your group health insurance plan to Medicare, make sure you're ready to absorb that Medigap premium as well, because if you don't enroll in Medigap now, you may not be able to at a later date. And you can't just enroll in one of the more bare bones, less expensive Medicare supplement plans now and switch at a later date. This is pretty much a commitment for life which is why it's very important to work with a broker who knows sort of the history of those premium increases because premiums will increase year over year, but some carriers have a better history of more stable, less dramatic rate increases than others. So add your Medicare Part B premium to whatever your Medigap premium would be and then compare that to your group health insurance costs. And if you have a family with dependents, you need to take that into consideration as well. If you do decide to defer Medicare Part B, make sure you follow the instructions on the back of the card and send it back. Because if not, you will keep Part B, you will be charged for it, and you're going to miss out on that six month medical underwriting free enrollment. Now when you do decide to re-enroll, please make sure you do so on time. Otherwise you may be subject to the Part B late enrollment penalty. So the Part B late enrollment penalty is 10% of the base beneficiary premium for each 12 month period where you were without Medicare Part B and without creditable coverage. And remember, this is not a one-time penalty. It gets tacked onto your monthly premium forever. Then there's also Part D and the Part D late enrollment penalty that you need to take into consideration. So your group plan will obviously offer you prescription drug coverage. However, this is not included as part of original Medicare. You would need a separate Part D plan for prescription drug coverage. Now the Part D late enrollment penalty is nowhere near as significant as the Part B late enrollment penalty, but again, it is going to get tacked onto your monthly premium forever. 
And even though it may not be a huge amount, it's even sillier to be subject to this late enrollment penalty because there are so many Part D plans that are so very inexpensive. There are even plans that have no monthly premium, $0 per month. So please make sure to sign up for at the very least one of the least expensive Part D plans if you don't need extensive prescription drug coverage at this time, just so that you don't have to pay that Part D late enrollment penalty later. Remember, you can always switch next year during the AEP if you need more extensive coverage. Now let's talk about Social Security. This isn't so much a Medicare mistake, but it is a huge mistake you could make that would severely impact your retirement. First, let's talk about your FRA, or full retirement age. So if you were born in 1937 or earlier, your full retirement age is 65. If you were born in 1938, it's 65 and two months. 1939, 65 and four months. 1940, 65 and six months. 1941, 65 and 8 months, 1942, 65 and 10 months, 1943 through 1954, it's a flat 66, then 1955, 66 and 2 months, 1956, 66 and 4 months, 1957, 66 and 6 months, 1958, 66 and 8 months, 1959, 66 and 10 months, and 1960 or later, that would be 67. Now, of course, as I said, you can start collecting as early as 62, or it could go up to 70. So this affects when you actually start taking Social Security, because you can do so at varying different ages. However, the age at which you start accepting Social Security affects the size of your Social Security payments. If you do decide to retire at age 62, then your benefits will be significantly reduced. And this chart will give you an overall idea, but there's actually a really great calculator on ssa.gov where you'll put in your specific information and it will give you a fixed number that is specific to your situation. But basically, this should give you an idea that if you were born between 1943 and 1954, your FRA is 66. Now, if you were to receive a $1,000 retirement benefit it would be reduced by 25%, which brings you down to 750. If you were born in 1955 and you were to retire at 62, then your benefit, if it would ordinarily be 1,000, would be reduced down to 741, which is a 25.83% reduction. Now, why is it more? Well, that's because the full retirement age for those born between 1943 to 1954 is 66, and that means between 66 and 62, it's 48 months. However, if you were born in 1955, then you were to retire at age 62, then your full retirement age would be 66 and two months, which gives you a 50 month difference, hence the larger decrease. And that goes on, so on and so forth. You will see that it just continues to get larger and larger. Therefore, your benefits get smaller and smaller. And that is, of course, if you were to have a $1,000 benefit. But as I said, there is a more specific calculator on ssa.gov, which will actually give you your benefits, your actual amount based on your retirement age and your salary. Now there are plenty of more Medicare mistakes that you could be making and the best way to avoid them is to just stay informed. Make sure to check out this video about the biggest threat to your retirement to learn more or if you want to just learn more about Medicare in general, you can check out this playlist here. If you have specific questions, you can reach us in the comments or at the number on the screen. Remember we are licensed nationwide and there's of course no charge for our services. As always, please make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.